Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. You're invited to join us on air asking your questions by calling in on the local rate phone numbers in the UK and the US, which can be found on ldnradio.org. Thank you for joining us. Today our guest is Dr Tom O'Brien, and I'm sure all of you will have known him from the Betrayal series, so it's going to be a very exciting programme. This show is sponsored by Dr. Tom O'Brien, who is the founder of www.thedoctor.com, that's D-R. He is an internationally recognized speaker and workshop leader, specializing in non-celiac gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. He hosted the Gluten Summit, A Grain of Truth, produced the documentary series, Betrayal, The Autoimmune Solutions They're Not Telling You, and wrote a book called The Autoimmune Fix. Thank you for joining us today, Tom. Oh, thank you, Linda. It's really a pleasure, and it truly is a pleasure to do anything to support you and the work that you do. I have such great respect for um, the LDN network and what you've put together over the years, and it's my pleasure to support you in every way I can. Thank you. Can you tell us how did you get into medicine? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I. <laughs> that's quite a story. Uh, uh, let's. Let's just start with um, when I was an intern, uh, my wife and I um, uh, could not get pregnant, and I called the seven most famous holistic doctors I'd ever heard of and asked them what they do for infertility, and they all told me what they do, and for example, one doctor said, you know what a category one is, and I said, no, and he said, learn, it's okay, Mm -hmm. and I wrote it down. And I wrote down everything they said, and I put a program together, and we were pregnant in six weeks. My neighbors in married housing, we lived on campus at the time, they had been through artificial insemination and nothing had worked and asked if I would work with them. And I said, well, you know, I don't think anything's going to hurt you, and so sure, why not? They were pregnant in three months. So before I got out into practice, uh, we were telling our friends how excited we were with our pregnancy and, and, um, and the other results we were getting. And so our friends would call their sister in Wisconsin who was having fertility problems, and she would come down to Chicago where I was going to school at the time and in my medical education, and, they would, and I'd work with them. And so I was working with people before I came out into practice, and I was just hot to trot to... <laughs> help every couple that wanted to get pregnant get pregnant. And one of the things that we learned during that time was that there's not much in medicine that's all or every. Not much, but this is an every. Every single couple that were having problems with fertility, uh, whether it was infertility or recurrent uh, miscarriages or low testosterone levels or altered hormone levels, every single couple had a component of what was going on for them that was food sensitivities. They were eating foods that were causing inflammation in their body, and they didn't know that the foods they were eating were causing the problem that was contributing to their body's poor function. Every couple. And we always, and what I've learned over the years since then is that you always have to address what's on the end of your fork whenever you're looking at trying to improve your health or how your body is functioning. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So you did what when you first went into practice? Did you start straight away with the gluten? Oh, my goodness, yes. Uh, uh, I was um, straight away talking about uh, the impact of foods in our diet, and it was wheat and dairy and sugar that were the main culprits back in the late 70s and early 80s that we knew about, and uh, nowhere near with as much research to validate what the problems are for wheat and for dairy as there is research today. There's over 20,000 studies now on wheat and the potential problems with wheat. Uh, uh, so here's, here's how I looked at it back then, and I still say the same thing today. This is now 30, 36 years, 37 years later. My daughter is now 36. Uh, and that is that when you pull on a chain, the chain always breaks at the weakest link. You know, it's at one end, the middle, the other end. It's your heart, your brain, your liver, your kidneys, your reproductive system. Wherever the weak link is in your body, you pull on the chain too hard, that's where the link's going to break. So the goal in healthcare is, and I've, and I've just been, I've spent a lifetime trying to figure out how to better do this, and that is stop pulling so hard on the chain, <laughs> whatever that means. And technically... What that means is that every disease, as far as we know, every single disease, every degenerative disease, is a disease of inflammation at the cellular level. It's always inflammation, always. And it's just a question, is it a brain cell or a kidney cell? Is it gasoline or kerosene? But whatever the trigger is pulling on the chain, Stop pulling on the chain so hard. So you have to figure out what's pulling on your chain. And when you do that, you I can't imagine um, a case where it does not improve your health and improve your, your function. So I was blessed to have really good teachers that had big picture overviews. My mentors, when I was first studying medicine and coming out into practice, were the, the mentors I picked were, were doctors that had this big picture overview. And the result is that I've just developed that big picture overview in my entire career. Mm-hmm. And could you tell us about your betrayal series? I mean, it, a wonderful feat of work. Uh, so much work went into that. Oh, yes. Um, it took a year. To put it together, literally, we started in October of 2015. The first interview was in Bellingham, Washington, Dr. Joe Pizzorno, the uh, godfather of naturopathic medicine, uh, in October of 2015, and took a full year of traveling the world, interviewing world leaders. And how do I know who to interview? I read their research papers, and I said, oh, where's this guy? Oh, he's in Barcelona, Spain. I'm going to Barcelona to interview this guy. And we would go wherever we had to to interview the scientists that were talking about the, uh, that uh, particular topic, whatever the topic was. Now, we have to understand that almost all of these scientists, they're geeks, and they specialize in one particular area of study. They are not clinicians treating patients every day. They're researchers. They're scientists. So they usually do not have the big picture overview of how to help a person be healthier, but the area that they study or they've really focused on is a piece of the puzzle, a critical piece of the puzzle. So I would go interview that researcher And then I would interview a doctor that has the bigger picture that was applying the principles of that researcher. And then we would interview a patient who had applied the principles that the doctor had learned from the researcher. And so that's how we put betrayal together. Um, The vast majority of the work, uh, there were different stages. First, the interviews. And then, you know, when you do an hour, an hour and a half interview, and we have 85 interviews, so it's 85 hours 
of um, potential information, we had to take clips out of each one that really identified the bullet point that we were trying to um, elaborate on and tie together. And uh, very grateful with uh, with the end result. What we came out with was something that's helped hundreds of thousands of people, over half a million people have, have watched Betrayal now, mm-hmm. and uh, um, thousands, tens of thousands, actually, of emails have come in of gratitude, people talking about um, how this has affected their lives and what they've learned in their own health and uh, appreciating the scientists and the patients um, like yourself, Linda, you know, who shared your story uh, in Betrayal. It was so moving, and uh, you so accurately represented uh, what most people come up against uh, when they are diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. It was just um, so easy for people to relate to the story, and um, uh, very grateful for that, and we'll be relaunching Betrayal again um, in the next couple of months, there's a lot of technological stuff that's got to happen so that it's not just up for a short period of time, but it's up. Um, it's called Evergreen, where it's there all the time. Oh, so we're working on that now. Mm-hmm. We're working on that now so that people will be able to see it um, at any time. And did you learn anything that you didn't know at the beginning of the journey of filming? <laughs> yes. Uh, first, I'm I'm not a uh, a film producer. <laughs> you know, there, there is there is so much technology behind all of that that the team we had was so marvelous. And um, one of the things I was so grateful for is that uh, every member of the team picked up on my enthusiasm and my message. You know, the topic that we were addressing, and so everyone on the team. Um, express gratitude that I've never worked on a project like this. Um, Myself, my health, and my family's health will be impacted for the rest of our lives. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Uh, uh, But I also learned a lot um, technically about healthcare by speaking to some of the scientists and things that I did not know um, about their area of expertise. Or uh, uh, I did not know how many young women, for example, are damaged permanently by um, the vaccines for HPV. And I did not know the mechanism as to why that happens. And now I understand it, um, that it's not everyone, but um, more than ever, it's very clear to me now that um, our genes never, I shouldn't say never, but rarely cause a problem. Our genes just tell us where the weak link in the chain is. Mm -hmm. And so if you pull at that chain too hard, that's where the link is going to break. And so the goal always, don't pull on the chain so hard. Find out what's pulling on your chain, what's causing your inflammation in life. What What are the foods that you're eating? What are the lifestyle habits you have that are contributing to more stress, more stress hormones, more inflammation? And the more we look at that from a clear perspective. Of a, I'll give you a, a visual. I don't think I've ever talked about this before. Um, in clinical practice, uh, when patients would come in to see me, and if they had a musculoskeletal complaint, they had back pain or neck pain, um, and we go in the room and um, there's the table that patients would lay down on, I'd stand up with them next to the table and I'd say, you know, I'd like to do this little exercise with you for a minute. So let's just face the table together and I'd stand next to them and I'd say, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to take a step backward with your right foot and then your left foot. We're, we're going to step backwards away from the table together. And they'd look at me like, okay, and I'm wondering, what the heck is this guy doing? I've heard he's kind of crazy and he's certainly doing something here. And then I'd say, so, Mrs. Patient, in order for us to address your headaches, to really understand where your headaches are coming from or your back pain or whatever the complaint was, one of the things we have to do is we have to imagine that you're laying on the table right now, and there there you are with your back pain. And what we have to do is, okay, please take a step backwards now. We have to step back together and we would physically back up from the table together we do this physical action to take a step back and we have to look 
at who's on the table and what's caused the problems that they're on the table with. In other words, you can't be caught by your symptoms. You have to be able to take a step back from your symptoms and look at what's causing them. Where are they coming from? Another term for that is going upstream, and I think I talked about that in betrayal uh, more than once, that the, the visual is you're falling over a waterfall and you crash into the pond below and you're just swimming to not drown, to keep your head above water. And there you are in this pool of water with the water churning all around because the, wa- the waterfall's falling down, the water's hitting the water, it's causing all these little waves, and you're just um, trying to stay afloat. That's what it's like when you've got symptoms, whatever they are, whatever neurological symptoms or heart symptoms or brain symptoms, you're trying to stay afloat in the symptoms. But what we have to do, usually with a functional medicine doctor, is that we have to go back upstream We have to go back before the waterfall and look at what fell into the water. What fell into the water that caused you to go downstream? When did you fall into this water? And now you're going downstream, and then you finally crash over the waterfall, and now you're just trying to stay afloat and not drown. So the goal in healthcare, and that's the purpose of betrayal, is to take everyone upstream to look at what is such a common trigger to the development of the conditions that people are suffering with. The first concept is autoimmune diseases are at the core or the foundation of most degenerative disease, including heart disease and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and diabetes, uh, uh, arthritis, that it's an immune mechanism that's triggering this. That's the first thing in betrayal is that it's an autoimmune mechanism. Then the question is, what's causing your immune system to go haywire here? And the answer is, it's not going haywire. It's actually doing everything it can to protect you. So then the question is, what's it trying to protect you from? And that's when we learn, oh, you mean the foods I eat may cause an inflammation in my body, which is, which is triggered by the immune system, So the foods I eat may be a trigger, or the air I'm breathing, or the water I'm drinking, or the emotional stress I have may be causing this inflammation that the immune system is responding to. So when you start to go back upstream, and with the right guidance, you have the right doctor or healthcare practitioner, or you're reading a book that gives you guidance in these concepts, and you start thinking, oh, wow, I, yeah, that's right. My mom had a lot of problems during pregnancy with me. That's right. I, uh, I remember hearing about that. Or, yeah, when I was a child, I had a lot of prescriptions for antibiotics for ear infections. I didn't realize that that could be contributing to my asthma now. Or, so you start seeing the connecting, the, the connecting dots. You start to put the dots together. That's the goal of betrayal, is to help everybody go upstream to get a better understanding of what they're currently trying to stay afloat suffering with. Well, it was amazing, and thank you for doing that for us. Uh, We'll just have a quick break, and we'll be back in just a minute. To listen to individual radio shows and interviews, go to www.mixcloud.com forward slash ldnrt. I'll repeat that. It's www.mixcloud.com forward slash LDNRT. This show is sponsored by Dr. Tom O'Brien, who is the founder of www thedoctor.com, that's D-R. He is an internationally recognized speaker and workshop leader, specializing in non-celiac gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. He hosted the Gluten Summit, A Grain of Truth, produced the documentary series Betrayal, The Autoimmune Solutions They're Not Telling You, and wrote a book called The Autoimmune Fix.
Welcome back, Tom. Could you tell us a little bit about um, the Gluten Summit? Because I thought that was a very interesting series. Yes, thank you. You know, you put a big smile on my face like a Cheshire cat. <laughs> I love it when interviewers say, please tell us a little bit. I mean, <laughs> don't talk too much. <laughs> so I understand. Yeah, so it was um, uh, in January of 2013 that I was sitting in a seminar that a friend of mine was hosting on how to carry your message out to the world. And I realized that I really hadn't done a very good job. I'd been lecturing all over the world um, on stage to doctors, and there'd be 200 or 400 or 50 in a room, depending on the venue. And I'd been doing that for a number of years and knowing that the doctors would then carry this information out to all of their uh, patients. Uh, but I realized that there was a bigger, a bigger game. It was, it was possible to reach more people with this life-saving information. So I made a declaration that weekend in January of 2013. I'm going to do a summit about gluten sensitivity. And I had no idea what I was saying because I'd never seen a summit. I'd never heard of a summit. I didn't know what an affiliate was. I mean, I didn't know anything. But I just started because I had the passion to do it. And um, we, we created this thing. We hired a team of individuals, a guy who was really knowledgeable about social media, I mean, like Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff and how to reach people. And another person who um, uh, was a tech person on how to record interviews. And I interviewed 29 of the world leaders um, on gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. I came to England and interviewed, went to Oxford and interviewed the godfather of celiac diagnosis, Dr. Michael Marsh. And I started, that was the first interview I did was with Professor Marsh at Wolfson College at Oxford. And that was just a wonderful launch for um, the entire series. He's such a wonderful man. And uh, uh, so I interviewed all these doctors and clinicians uh, in the country who were applying these principles. And we put it together and we aired it online. It was audio only. And we put it online for free. It was all free. Uh, we'd put four interviews up for a day and then take them down and then four more would go up and for a day and then take them down and four more would go up. And we had over a hundred thousand people, um, listen to this and it just blew everybody away. No one had ever done anything like that. Now there are many, many health summits using that same model of interviewing people and putting them up online. And, uh, uh, so that got me into this world of, of carrying a message out, reaching more people. And that was uh, that aired in um, November of 2013. And it was three years later before, actually two years, because I started in October of 2015 with Betrayal. So it was two years later before I really understood what was next, what was the message to carry out. And that's when we took the whole concept of wheat and wheat sensitivity. It's a component it's a very important component for a lot of people that's throwing gasoline on the fire, but it's not the big picture. The big picture is autoimmunity. How is your immune system trying to protect you, and why is it causing the damage that it is? So the Gluten Summit launched me into this world of carrying a message out to reach more people, and betrayal has taken us to the next level now of reaching even more more people with the docu series. So, what's next? We are wondering. What's next? Mm. Yes. Uh, well, uh, there's going to be uh, uh, more emphasis on um, what do you do when you find out? First, how do I find out if I have an autoimmune mechanism going on? And then, what do you do with when you find out that you've got elevated antibodies to your brain? Uh, uh, an example of that is Dr. Dale Bredesen is at, he runs the Buck Institute at UCLA. And Dr. Bredesen published a paper uh, in November of 2014 in the medical journal Aging. And he shows that at UCLA, they completely reversed Alzheimer's in nine out of 10 patients in five years. It oh. took five years, but they completely reversed it. And what, what did Dr. Bredesen do? 
He did functional medicine. There is no pill that's ever going to reverse your disease, people. Stop thinking about the magic pill. There is no magic pill. It's the lifestyle pulling on the chain with wherever the weak link in your chain is that causes whatever it is that you get, whether it's heart disease or MS or Parkinson's or rheumatoid arthritis or psoriasis or diabetes or obesity. It's pulling on the chain, manifesting at the weak link. And when you understand that bigger concept, when you get that bigger concept and you take a step back from what you're currently suffering with, swimming in the, in the pond at the bottom of the waterfall, when you can take a step back from that and understand that bigger picture, entire new avenues of, pro, of approach will come to you about how do I deal with my dot, 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 with whatever your dot, dot, dot is. So uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of that, a lot more of that education on what do I do with rheumatoid arthritis, what do I do with brain deterioration, what do I do with neurogenerative diseases. Uh, so the goal here is to change the way people think. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all taught that when you have a symptom, look for the pill to get rid of the symptom, to, to get it to go away, and then forget about it. I propose when you have a symptom, look for the protocol to get rid of the symptom, whether it's a pill or whatever it should be that you need to take, and then continue looking to see what caused this and how do I prevent this from coming back. That's where we want people to go. We want people to think that way so that you can raise healthier children. Mm -hmm. Because, and now I'm going to tell you this one, we touched on it in betrayal, and this is really important. I was uh, on an airplane about three months ago and reading the newspaper, and I read an article from the World Wildlife Fund in conjunction with two major universities. They just published to say that we have lost, on average, 57% of all wildlife since 1970. Wow. And I said, oh, that's too bad. And I flipped the page to read the next article in the newspaper. And I land back uh, home, go out to the parking lot and get in my car, and I'm driving home from the airport. And I almost hit the brakes on the highway. So, said, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've lost more than half of everything that lives on the planet in 46 years. We've killed it off. It's gone. More than half of everything? Mm -hmm. Yes. More than half of everything that lives on the planet? Yes. The bumblebees, yes. The rainbow trout, yes. The polar bears, yes. The cougars, yes. The cheetahs, yes. The elephants, yes. The honeybees, yes. The hummingbirds, yes. More than half of everything, uh, all the wildlife that lives on the planet has been wiped out in the last 46 years. When you get that statistic, if you really understand that statistic and don't just brush past it the way I did in the airport or on the airplane, I said, oh, that's too bad, and went on to read the next article. When you really get that, and then the next logical question is, well, what does that mean for humans? Now, the articles just came out a couple of months ago. For the first time in many, many decades, lifespan for men in this country, in the United States, has reduced compared to the year previously. It's going down. And the New England Journal of Medicine published a paper for the first time in the history of the human species ever. Children have a shorter projected lifespan than their parents. They're going to get sick at earlier ages, get diagnosed with diseases at earlier ages, and die at earlier ages than when their parents die. This has never happened to humans before. And if you take a step back and look at these statistics, you have to wonder, what the heck is happening here? Mm -hmm. And what's pulling on our chain, so much of what's pulling on our chain is the toxicity of the world we live in. The toxicity in the food, well, it looks like a good carrot to me. I mean, it tastes like a good carrot. Yes, but there's chemical residues on it that are accumulating in your body. You see, that 57% number, that's the average for all wildlife on the planet. The numbers are higher for animals that live near fresh water. Why is that? Because they drink the water. 
And if you were drinking the water out of streams that run by your house, you'd get cancer really quick also. You'd be unable to reproduce also, just like what's happening to the animals. We filter our water so we don't get those higher concentrations of all these chemicals. We get just minute doses on our food and in the air that we breathe and in our clothing. The, <laughs> we take our newborn infants and we wrap them in flame-retardant-soaked clothing. And those flame retardants eke out into the skin and get absorbed into the body. We sleep in sheets that have flame retardant and blankets that have flame retardant. How many people do you know that, God forbid, they they were in a house fire and they were saved because they were in bed in flame (laughs) retardant sheets? I mean, give me a break. It's just a way to use the chemicals. And the result is we're inhaling minute dosages of all these chemicals. We take our clothes to the cleaner, our nice clothes, um, and they dry clean them to keep them fresh, our suits and things like that. And then all those chemicals, we breathe those chemicals. When you buy new furniture, if it's made from press board, which is fairly common, the press board outgasses formaldehyde in your kitchen forever, a little bit every day. And we get all of these toxic chemicals day after day after day that our immune system, trying to protect us, fights. And our immune system is fighting so hard to protect us, there's a lot of collateral damage that occurs. And if the weak link in your chain is your nervous system, you get MS or you get Alzheimer's. If the weak link in the chain is the joints, you get rheumatoid arthritis. If the weak link in the chain is your skin, you get acne or psoriasis. And the list goes on and on and on. But we have to take a step back, people, to get the bigger picture so we don't just go after getting rid of the symptoms. It's very important to get rid of the symptoms, of course, but we don't stop there. We have to be looking to see where do these symptoms come from. Mm -hmm. Can we go to some questions now? If not, we're going to run out of time. Yes, I think of we could have a two-hour show. Uh, we have a message from yes, Jill <laughs> who says that she's a huge fan of you and she thought your documentary series was great. And she says um, the series talked about halting autoimmune dis- disorders naturally, which was fantastic, and thank you so much for making it. But how often do you see patients who do all the recommended lifestyle diet modifications and still can't turn off their autoimmunity? How long should a person try lifestyle changes before giving in and taking an immune suppressant drug like Celsep? I ask this because I work so hard for 15 years doing all the things and I'm not yet in remission. I take three milligrams of LDN and get IVIG every 28 days for autoimmune, autonomic um, neuropathy. Autonomic neuropathy. Yeah, and I'm not winning this fight. Is there a point at which you'd recommend I give in and take an autoimmune suppressant like Celsep? That's a really good question, Jill. That's an excellent question. And the answer is you never give up. You never give up. Now, you take the medications that are required so that you can function and slow down the deterioration. And you use your doctors for that, and you ask questions so to make sure they're recommending the right medication. I don't know if that's the right medication for you or not with your specific symptoms, but um, it's in the category. That medication is certainly in the category. And so you take the medications as low a dose as you need so that you can function and slow down the progression of this thing, but you also keep searching, where's it coming from? Where's it coming from? There has to be a trigger. Is it gasoline or kerosene that's causing the weak link in your chain, your nervous system, to have this condition? Is it accumulated chemicals inside your own body? Very common. I've had a couple of patients with auto autonomic neuropathies, um, that it was heavy metal accumulation that had accumulated over many, many years. Uh, Lead or mercury could be arsenic. Uh, For those people that go gluten-free, which is a good thing to do, but for those who go gluten-free, they start eating a lot of rice. So much of the rice in our world today is loaded with arsenic. 
And so they get arsenic poisoning, which can be a huge irritant to your nervous system, causing the inflammation of your nervous system. So you need to find out where is the trigger coming from. And it sounds like you've been studying that for 15 years. Kudos to you. And my message would be stay there, stay in the game and do the medication so that you can function and slow down the progression of this thing. Well, thank you very much. We have another question here and it says, um, Dr. O'Brien, I'm a healthy, active 51-year-old male and I have Hashimoto's. I'm currently taking Armour, 300 milligrams a day. I was diagnosed three years ago with an antibody test. Further, I have been gluten-free for a year and I'm also taking 4.5 of LDN nightly. My challenge is this. Day to day, I have essentially no symptoms of Hashimoto's and feel great. However, when I exercise moderate to heavy, I become very dehydrated overnight and wake up groggy with brain fog and fatigue, sometimes lasting most of the day. LDN seems to have moderated this exercise response, but it's still in my life. I live in an altitude where hydration is common, dehydration is common. My symptoms seem to disappear at sea level or are greatly moderated. I've seen numerous doctors regarding this phenomenon, but none have been interested in helping me, mostly since they don't know what to do about it. What's your insight, please? And this is from Eric. Really, really good question. Really, you're a functional medicine practitioner's dream patient. I love, I'm often referred to as a Sherlock Holmes. I love working with people like this, that they're willing to do what it takes and they're knowledgeable and they're applying the principles. So the first thing I would do is I would do a proper test for um, gluten sensitivity. I know you're gluten free, but I would do the test. You'll find it on my website at the dr.com. It's called the wheat zoomer, the wheat zoomer test to see if what you're doing is working. Or do you still have elevated antibodies to wheat? We assume that our protocols work without checking to confirm that they're working. So I would look to see where's the trigger. There has to be a trigger for your condition. Now, when you exercise, that you have these symptoms afterwards just means that when you accelerate a little your car on the freeway, you start going a little too fast and the car starts not functioning so well. And so you drive slower. And um, as we age, that would require going slower and slower and slower. In other words, you're crossing a threshold. When you exercise, you're crossing a threshold. It shouldn't be that way, but that's the way it is for you right now. So the question is, what's the emergency break that's holding your body back? What is it that's taken you to this, this edge that if you go over the edge, you fall over the waterfall down into the pond? What is it? I don't know what it is. You know, you have to explore that with a functional medicine practitioner. But that's the line of thinking. Take a step back and find a practitioner that can help you with that to explore and see where is this coming from? What is it? So the first thing I would do if you were in my practice would be I'd confirm that what you're doing is working and that you do not have elevated antibodies to any of the peptides of wheat just to make sure that what you're doing is working. Then we'd go into what other toxins might be in your body. What is it? Um, are, perhaps you're sensitive to dairy, and it manifests um, by impacting on your mitochondria. That's your energies, your, your powerhouses in every cell. It's called the mitochondria. And when you push too hard, you just run out of gas. And so maybe it's a, a mitochondriopathy. I mean, there's something wrong with the mitochondrial function. Don't know what it is, but you need a practitioner who can explore that with you. Wonderful. Thank you. We'll just go to another quick break and then we'll get back to some more questions. The LDN Research Trust has its own forum, which can be found at forum.ldnresearchtrust.org or via our website. The forum is divided into sections, so it's easy to navigate and find what you're looking for. You can share your experience, ask questions, keep a journal, etc., Unlike Facebook, the posts are always easy to find and don't get buried. We have a private medical professionals only section. To find out more, please email me, linda at ldnrt.org. This show is sponsored by Dr. Tom O'Brien. 
who is the founder of www.thedoctor.com, that's D-R. He is an internationally recognized speaker and workshop leader, specializing in non-celiac gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. He hosted the Gluten Summit, A Grain of Truth, produced the documentary series Betrayal, The Autoimmune Solutions They're Not Telling You, and wrote a book called The Autoimmune Fix. Okay, welcome back. And uh, we'll get on with the next question, which is from Jen. And she says, I've read your book, The Autoimmune Fix. I noticed that in your book, you focus a lot on the autoimmune spectrum and how to reverse them when they're just developing. I understand that you're trying to prevent people from getting a full-blown autoimmune disease, but it's really hard to tell when you're developing, or at least in my case, I would never have imagined I was at risk. My question is that, can a person who has already has a full-blown autoimmune disease and how can it be reversed or halted? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and I don't know, maybe thousands of cases in the literature of reversing autoimmune diseases. Yes. And the, the, how do you do that? Well, read the book, but you <laughs> read the book that you're asking the question. Um, what you have to do is take a step back from being caught in the symptoms to look at what happened upstream. Was it that I had multiple doses of antibiotics as a child and as a teenager for acne. Uh, So first as a child for ear infections and then as a teenager for acne, more antibiotics. And now I'm in my 30s and I have Crohn's disease, which is a disease of the intestines. Uh, You have to look back and see where did all this come from or what might be contributing to this? What fell into the stream? that eventually went downstream and fell over the waterfall. Uh, There's no answer. There's no one answer. There's no one magic pill. LDN is a marvelous, marvelous medication to use, but it's not the answer. It's just um, a good tool to reduce symptoms and bring function back again. But for most people, if they stop the LDN, what happens is some of their symptoms come back. That's because there's a mechanism underneath that that's being calmed down by the LDN without side effects, which is so marvelous. I mean, I'm so much in favor of using that medication, but I want people to understand it is not a godsend to reverse autoimmunity. It is a godsend to reduce symptoms and bring function back again, but the underlying mechanisms still have to be addressed. And, Jen, in your case, um, I don't know what the triggers are for the the symptoms that you've noticed, but we time and time again, first you you do the test. uh, It's called a predictive autoimmune test. You look for the antibodies to your own tissue, and you see, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that I've got elevated antibodies to my brain. I mean, I had the elevated antibodies for the same disease that Linda contracted. I had elevated antibodies to myelin basic protein. That's what causes MS. When I was 44, I had this, and I had two other antibodies elevated in my brain, attacking my brain, and that's what woke me up to this whole thing, and now I've done the test twice since then, and it's negative now both times. The antibodies are all calmed down because I learned, in my case, what was it that was throwing gasoline on the fire. We all have to learn as individuals what it is that's happening inside our own bodies. There's no sure cure for everybody. Um, LDN is as close as a uh, 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 carrier of relief, I guess I could say it that way, for so many different conditions with very, very little side effects, if any at all. It's a marvelous tool, but it's a tool for symptom relief. And what we have to do is look at where is all this stuff coming from. We can't forget to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a a question from Alison, and she says, I was diagnosed with relapsing and remitting MS in 2011. My motability had gradually worsened. For two months, I've been on a gluten, wheat and dairy-free eating plan. I detoxed before I started. I avoid plastic contamination with all my food and drink. 
I've noticed small improvements, but I'm curious, do I continue to take the LDN or do I try to minimise all drugs and stop taking it? Please, can you help? Well, that's a really good question. Kudos to you for the action steps you're taking. Um, it'll take oh, a minimum of six months before I would recheck your gluten antibody panels to make sure that you're eliminating all exposures to that. Uh, uh, you, you won't see a difference in the blood test for at least six months. That's safe. If you do them earlier, you're going to waste your money. Uh, um, in terms of the LDN, you speak with the physician that prescribed it to you. Um, I don't know uh, of um, side effects of great concern with taking LDN. I just don't know of any. Uh, so I don't know that there would be a problem for you to continue with it. Um, LDN, uh, along with uh, powdered nystatin, are two medications that when patients are taking those, they don't bring a lot of alarm to me. Um, I'm not concerned about the potential side effects of those two medications, and they have great benefit for different conditions, but they have great benefit in many, many cases. So that doesn't alarm me, but you always want to go back to the physician that prescribed the medication to you um, to get guidance. Now, you may bring them information that you've learned, but you go back to that person. So, and with your, your specific condition, um, a good friend of mine, Dr. Terry Walls, W-A-H-L-S, and Dr. Walls was in betrayal in episode one, talking about the immune system, and, and she completely reversed her MS, and she's a brain neurophysiologist, uh, and everything she did did not work until she changed the way that she thinks about it, and she started addressing her diet. So I would get Dr. Walls' book. She, she wrote a book about her experience, and she'll give you a lot of good information and avenues to take a look at and see if they relate to you. That's Dr. Terry Wall's book. It's called The Wall's Protocol. Lovely. Uh, we'll move on to the next question because we're not going to get through, <laughs> through many more. Um, it says, hello, Dr. Tom. I have followed you for what seems like forever because most of us have inflammation with autoimmune, even if we have managed to proactively to bring... CRP levels down to a normal lab range. We know it's still too high. This can lead to low sodium iron and low transferrin saturating, saturation because their body recognises the inflammation synchronizer, our iron into ferritin storage levels. Our cells function on very little. Active B12 uptake on tissues can also be compromised by autoimmune leaving it high in the blood and not available. Can LDN still safely and effectively be taken with a low messed up B12 function or nerve damage symptoms and anemia of inflammation? Um, as, the, as all this seems to now to be the only way to bring inflammation down and restore normal bodily functions... Good. Um, um, this person has done their homework. They've been researching this for a while. Good for you. Uh, two things I'd be concerned with. Well, the first one, can LDN be safely taken? As far as I know, the answer is yes. Uh, but I would certainly check with your prescribing physician uh, in your case. Um, uh, I'm not recommending any medications to you uh, in an interview. That you know, I, But um, I would not be hesitant personally to review the case uh, if you were in my practice, from what you've told me, I would not hesitate to give you LDN, but I don't know that it's right for you. So first I have to give you that answer. Mm -hmm. Then I'd be looking at your gut, and I'd be looking at your microbiome. What is it about your gut that's contributing to this inflammatory cascade you have and your altered fun um, uh, iron capabilities and ferritin function? And I think I just have a hunch you're going to find it in your microbiome. And there's a test, uh, the type of test that you would want to do um, is something uh, similar to the test that's on our website. It's called the Gut PAC, P-A-C, G-U-T-P-A-C. When you look at that test, and there's a link, you can click on it and read more about that test. Have your doctor order a test like that and get that test done. I think you'll find that there's some type of an imbalance in your microbiome that's substantial and that you can address and begin to reverse some of the intestinal dysfunction it sounds like you have. Okay, last question, because I want to talk about your book. 
Um, this is a question from Adrienne, and she says, I've watched your autoimmune disease series and I've bought your book, The Autoimmune Fix, and I've read the recipe part and have carried on with the no sugar, gluten or dairy as well, which is amazing. And she's done that for six weeks now. But so far, she's found little or no progress apart from losing weight, which she said she needed to do. She's a 68 year old woman and she's had MS for over 40 years. Has she left it too late to halt or reverse the disease or has the horse already bolted out of the stable? I'm sorry, did you say she's had MS for 40 years? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, the horse is bolted out of the stable, but you need to corral the horse. You know, you need to get a, get a rope and lasso that horse and get him back in the stable. Um, glad to hear that your, your, your physiology is changing. Your physiology is changing because you've been losing weight, and it's not because of counting calories, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. uh, the things you're doing, good for you for doing those, but there has to be a trigger that uh, uh, actually not. There may not be a trigger that's causing more inflammation. There may be, there may not be. You have to do some testing to find out, am I still inflamed? Uh, the likelihood is you are. Uh, but you may not be. It may be that the nerve damage is just so substantial that uh, it takes a long time to regenerate nerves. Uh, every cell in your body regenerates, every single cell. You have a whole new body every seven years. Some cells regenerate every two to three days, the inside lining of your gut, every two to three days. Some cells are very slow, like brain cells, central nervous system cells, uh, heart cells. They're very slow to regenerate. Uh, and so that's why MS is such a difficult one, is that, you know, it, everybody wants to be a 10 in life, you know, perfect function. Everybody does. Well, right now, your ner central nervous system may be functioning as a 3.2. And I'm going to make it up, but it sounds like uh, uh, MS for 40 years and the symptoms are not getting better. Uh, I'm going to make up a number 3.2. When that cell reproduces, it reproduces as a 3.2. It doesn't reproduce as a 10. Although the genes are there for a 10, it reproduces as a 3.2. If the lifestyle that caused the degeneration continues and you have more inflammation, you start functioning as a 3.1. That cell reproduces as a 3.1. If the lifestyle continues, you start functioning as a 3.0. That cell reproduces as a 3.0. But now... You change your diet, you change your lifestyle, you get rid of the inflammation, you're feeling better. It's slow, but you're feeling a little better. You're, fe you're, you're functioning as you have your 3.0, all of a sudden you're functioning like a 3.3. That cell reproduces as a 3.3. And then a 3.4 reproduces as a 3.4. And it goes to 3.6, 3.8, 4.2, 5.1. And all of a sudden, six months, a year later, people say, you look really good. What are you doing? You look different. Mm -hmm. And you feel the same because you're still suffering because your nerves have been so damaged, but you're functioning better. So you look for those little signs. So you, in a case like yours, you have to look at what's the diet and nutrition that supports rebuilding brain and central nervous system tissue. And I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. That's my new book that I'm working on right now is on the brain and the central nervous system. That's next. And so you look for all of those things. And you make sure you put those nutrients into your lifestyle and you reduce the triggers that pull on the chain so that your function is a 3.4 and a 3.5 and a 3.6 and a 3.7. And it's called an anabolic growth pattern. You're building healthier, stronger tissue. So absolutely keep doing what you're doing. Lasso that horse so it doesn't run away further. Make sure all your inflammation markers are down in normal ranges, and then just know you're dealing with damaged tissue that's going to regenerate, and is it going to regenerate the same, is it going to regenerate worse, or is it going to regenerate better? So the goal is it regenerates better, higher function. Well, I think that's going to give everybody hope who's listening, who's got something wrong with them, how you can improve it slowly, slowly. That's very helpful. Thank you. And we have literally four minutes now to talk about the autoimmune <laughs> fix book. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, uh, the book is my 35 years in practice and these concepts. And the purpose of the book is to give you comfort with taking a step back from your body lying on that table. 
with the symptoms that you currently have because we're so enmeshed in our bodies we think oh i'm uh uh i'm an ms patient or i'm a diabetes patient as opposed to i'm a person whose body currently has diabetes and so we need to take a step back and einstein said and this is so relevant with our world today as as it's decaying and dying off so quickly einstein said the level of problems we've created today cannot be solved with the same level of thinking that created the problem. So you have to shift how you think about your problems, your health problems, in order to solve them. You can't solve them with the same level of thinking that allowed the problems to develop. Well, I'll go a little gluten-free, you know, I'll have a little of something once in a while. You have to change the way that you think. And so the purpose of the autoimmune fix is to give you the background information so that it makes sense to you that this mechanism is probably the trigger that set you off. And then now you start the journey. Remember, the journey of a 1,000 miles starts with one step. So you take one step. And every week you take one step. There's a display in the Museum of Science in Florence, Italy, it's, it's a mar- round marble display with a glass dome on it, and it's Galileo's finger. And Galileo, in his will, bequeathed that all of his inventions could be on display for all of posterity, as long as they also displayed his finger. <laughs> and you can read the story behind that. You go to Amazon and type in Am- uh, Galileo's finger, and there's two books on it. But that one finger, that one thing, I, I, I show that picture in many of my lectures, that I've one thing. I've seen it. And mm-hmm. I, I, I use that for one hour. One hour a week, you're going to spend time looking at how do I regenerate nerve cells if you have a nerve-related problem? Or how do I regenerate healthier blood vessels if you have a blood vessel-related problem? And just take an hour a week so you don't get overwhelmed by it. One hour a week to read a little something, to follow a lead. In six months, you've got this down. You really understand it. So maybe it's you're going to read The Autoimmune Fix, and it's a book that's very, very thick in information. I tried to make it, make it user-friendly, but there's so much information. It may be that you read one hour a week from the book or some, you know, something like that. But you just stay on the path and don't try to absorb it all at once and find the answer. You're not going to find the answer. The answer is to change the way you think. And that's the goal of the book. And if you order the book at my website, thedr.com, don't spell the word doctor out, just dr, thedr.com, you'll see the link there for the book. It takes you to Amazon to get the book. But when you go through the website, we give you a bunch of handouts that you can download to go along with the book. So you get the book at Amazon, but then you also get the handouts. And when you read that book, my goal is that you have a deeper understanding of, wow, I had no idea. This is what my body's going through. Okay, okay, this is a journey. All right, I'm on the path now. All right, what's the first step? Let's I'm see. going to have to stop you, Tom. Step. I'm really sorry, but we've run out of time. That's all right. It's been absolutely amazing, and we'll have to get you back another day, and we'll find out more and we'll answer some more questions so thank you very much for being with us today thank you linda thank you everyone for attending any questions or comments you may have please email me linda l-i-n-d-a at ldnrt.org i look forward to hearing from you thank you for joining us today we really appreciated your company Until next time, stay safe and keep well.